Hey there everybody, Gideon's Tactical here. Me and Tommy the Trail Dog. Just wanna do a quick intro for you guys for the next about month's worth of videos. Uh, we're gonna be releasing a series on field tests and tabletop reviews of the a lot, almost all, of the Becker line by K-Bar. We're gonna be looking at the BK14. We're gonna be looking at the tweener editions, BK15, 16, 17. We're gonna be looking at the BK2, the BK10 Crewman. We're gonna be looking at the BK7. All these knives we're gonna be taking a look at because for the price point you really can't go wrong there's nothing better on the market for the price of the Becker products that are that are out there there's also the BK9 there's the BK3 and BK5 we, we don't have a chance to be, review those now but uh, the ones that I listed those are the ones we're gonna be looking at we're gonna release one a week for the next couple weeks uh, just so you can see how they really are used out in the field you know and, and the quality that you get with them now they're not the perfect knives but the deal is for you to get something better uh, you really have to go over a hundred bucks and that's what's awesome is because with those Becker products you're going to get a good quality US made 1095 high carbon steel knife uh, it made in the USA with a good quality sheath all for under 100 bucks that's really really hard to do um, particularly in this day and age just with all the other knives out there and different stuff again I mean you for the price you're really gonna have to go probably over hundred dollars to get as good a quality knife as you get with the Beckers so um, just enjoy the next couple weeks as we release one a week uh, of these videos comment subscribe uh, you know, go back if you if you find and stumble across one of these videos, go back check out the other ones uh, because we're gonna be re just releasing all these videos and they're just awesome. These backers are just uh, great blades for the price. So enjoy, stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there. All right, everybody, welcome to another episode of Gideon's Tactical. Uh, we're hiking up to our little getaway in the wilderness. We're gonna be testing out the BK7 today. Just give you the quick specs. I don't want to do a tabletop review. You guys have seen that a bunch of times. There's so many videos on the BK7. There's a reason for that. I mean, it's a great knife. Basic specs, you got high carbon steel, 1095 Covan. Rockwell hardness 56 to 58. Great high carbon steel made in the USA. Seven inch blade with a saber or flat grind, not a full flat, which I, I found does a great job splitting wood, that type of grind. Your full flats are also good, but I almost prefer saber grinds if I'm having to split a bunch of wood. Uh, weighs 12 ounces, 13 inches overall. So I mean, it's a beefy, hefty blade, but as we're about to find out here in this field testing, I mean, it's gonna, for the price point, you really can't beat it. So we will see you guys up there in just a few, and we will do the field test of the BK7. So, you know, one of the things you might have to do with this BK7 is do some chopping, you know. Um, it weighs 12 ounces, it's got seven inch blades, so it's got half to it. Uh, you know, it's maybe not the most ideal, maybe a hatchet, maybe just a larger, you know, RTAC 2, uh, SP50 by Ontario, or the BK9 uh, might uh, chop a little bit better. Um, but if you had to, you can do some chopping. We're just gonna kind of test it out here, see how this baby does with some chopping. This dried out pine. It definitely bites in there good. Really nice and good. Getting really good. Angles in there. And this is a nice big hard dried out piece of pine. You can see I'm getting a pretty good bite in there when I'm chopping. I mean, not ideal. You never want to be really chopping doing this with a knife, but if you had to, in your survival situation, you know, the BK7 is going to chop really well. You can see that right there. I mean, I'm going through that piece of wood. It's going to take me some time, but I can definitely, if I have to, you know what I love? This handle is designed really well in that I got my lanyard on and this cup right back here is awesome. I can get my two fingers, my thumb around there, got my two thumbs back here and I can really get that good motion, that swing. I really like that. A lot of bigger knives don't have this little cup back here and the knife tends to slip out of your hand and it just takes more time. You're constantly fumbling with it, trying to you know get a good handle on it. If I'm holding it like this, it's not sliding out. It's not gonna you know, want to come out of my hand.
and you can see here, I mean, if I had to, I'm just going out like a beaver. I mean, probably another like three, four minutes. I'm not going to film the whole thing. I can get through this and break it. That's a big piece of wood. So BK7 will do a good job at chopping. Not ideal. I mean, you, you know, a, a much heavier knife will do the job, but this is a good survival not weight and size. You know, this is something you can carry on you. You know, I'm not going to go for a day hike with an RTAC 2 on. It's just not going to happen. Whereas a BK7, I could definitely carry this in my pack or on my, on my leg. It's what you can carry out. You know, you may have the biggest, awesomest, heaviest knife in the world, but uh, if you're not hiking it out every day when you're using it, uh, when you need it, you're not going to have it. So uh, the BK7 has the weight it needs to do the job, but not too heavy. So, boom, BK7, chop and test. All right, everybody, here's the BK7 doing some batoning. You know, it's got a 3 inch spine. It's going to do a great job when it comes to splitting and chopping wood. You know, that seven inches is going to give it a lot of room to, to be able to, to span wood. You can see there that it can just baton right through a lot of different types of wood really easily without much effort at all. It's just going right through this log here. And there we go, and I'm able to uh, now split these guys and get some uh, kindling for the fire. So uh, the only downside with this knife when it comes to batoning is the unsharpened swedge up here. Uh, really chews up your stick. You can see there how badly I've already jacked up that whole piece of wood. And uh, smaller pieces of wood, they're going to break really quick because it's so thin. Uh, and that's where a drop point design is a little bit better, but they are selling this to you as, you know, a combat utility knife. So that unsharpened swedge can kind of hurt you sometimes with batoning. Uh, but other than that, I mean, just a great splitter. It's going to split all this wood amazingly well. That's the BK7 batoning. All right, everybody, here we go. Doing the detailed work. You know, what's cool about this knife for the most part is that... Uh, you can do detailed work with it. You know, big, some big knives are just kind of suck to do detailed work. But uh, if I choke up here and I need to do some feather sticks, you know, it gets its fire going, or just doing some carving, whittling, you know, it does a good job. It's gonna bite in well. And you're gonna get some of that feathering stuff with a big knife, which is nice. Cause again, like I said, some of those bigger knives, it's just difficult to do it. It's not very comfortable. You know, all those different things. They got a big knot, you know, it's a big blade just makes it hard to use for this kind of more detailed work. Now this is the deal guys. This is the one hang up that I have with the BK7. Great knife overall. I mean, it's like a Honda Civic. It's like, you can't go wrong with it for the price point. It's going to do everything you want to do, last a lifetime. And that's what's awesome about it. The downside for me is this thumb ramp right here. You see this big amount of jimping in this thumb ramp. And when I'm using it like this and I'm doing my more detailed work and because they are it is called a utility combat bk7 so they are saying that you can use this in a combat situation i probably never would i probably have a smaller lighter faster knife um, but uh, as i do this and as i use this knife the thumb ramp does not help me with this detailed stuff and actually begins to cramp my thumb my thumb is not comfortable right now my joint right here gets sore relatively quickly uh, and i don't really like that uh, you can hold it this way without your thumb on there, and then that takes away that pain, and you know you can do your detailed work. So that's not a big deal. It's not a big issue for a lot of people out there. But for me, uh, you know, I would prefer something much more along the lines designed like this BK14. You know, see how it's flat right up here. So then I can get my thumb where I need to, and it's more comfortable. Whereas with the BK7, you got that thumb ramp, and it just hurts my finger uh, to do what you see here. I can only do very minimal amount of stuff like this, and then it's going to start to uh, cramp my hand. It's already starting to hurt, and i got to go reverse back to this. And I, per I just don't prefer cutting wood like this. Most of you aren't even going to care, but uh, for me, I just don't really dig that. So uh, that's the thing that I, the big hit that I have against the BK7, if this was just flat, no thumb ramp, home run would be blowing my mind. That's the only complaint I have is this little guy right here. So for detail work, though, the BK7 does a good job. All right, everybody, so in conclusion, the BK7 overall is going to be a great 7-inch survival knife for you. You get a very good quality sheath, you know, it's going to last a very long time. You get a set, the 7-inch blade made in the U.S. with a good warranty, 1095 steel. Uh, it's going to baton well. You can do your detail work. You can do your chopping. 
Uh, you can do a lot of things with this BK7. The only complaint and hang up I have is with that thumb ramp that we've already talked about. Uh, you can upgrade these as well. You know, you can do the micarta scales for about another 50 bucks. These things run about $70, and that's why I'm saying that this is a great blade. Is for 70 bucks. Uh, I don't really know of anything else on the market that can do what this does for 70 bucks. Uh, now, with that being said, there are some other knives on the market that I would prefer over this for about $20 more. Uh, you can pick them up. I would prefer, just for size, uh, a Rat 7. You know, it's going to have almost the exact same blade length. It will not have this clip design, so it'll be a little bit better for the batoning. It's a full flat grind, same type of steel. It has the micarta scales and has a very similar sheath. That's for about $25 more. They, those run between $90 and $100 bucks for those Rat 7s. Um, another example would be an SE6, though that is a little sh shorter. You can get those for about 130, but then you start going into you know 100, 110, 120. You know the Buck Thug is an amazing one um, that's right around that seven inch. That's going to do a great job for you. Uh, but those are all again between 25 to even 50 dollars more versus this 70 dollar BK7. Again, for the price. You can't go wrong for a seven inch blade. This will do a lot, a lot of stuff for you. So overall, a thumbs up for the BK7. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this review has helped you out. Uh, if that's your price point, pick one of these up. You won't regret it. So thanks for watching. Stay equipped, stay prepared, and we'll see you out there.